Hi guys, this is Mike Hibbert back with another Python Django tutorial for you. Uh, this time round we're going to take uh, our last tutorial a step further in that we we looked at templates and how to create a base template for the whole site. Um, and we also looked at the, the styling of the site and how it applied to all the different pages so that you could apply CSS to your sites. And here's the CSS that we we included last time. Now what this time what we're going to do is we're going to start moving that out and storing it in a separate CSS file. Um, as well as that we're going to show how to, to include other files like an image for instance um, and that will help us to be able to to know how to separate these other files which just get included into the HTML. In Django, these are known as static files. I don't know if you if you've done any web programming before, you may not call this um, static files in something like PHP, but they're just basically files that need to be included um, that aren't necessarily code. So, for instance, CSS images, or even if you're doing a link to a PDF or something like that, then static files is the thing you need to help uh, get your users to be able to download that content into that browser. So, first of all, what we need to do is we need to establish where we're going to keep our static files. So inside of our Django project folder, I've created a static folder with two folders in it, CSS, with a default CSS file in there, and that basically contains what's in here. So I've just basically cut and pasted it out and put it into this default CSS file. Back in the static folder, I've also got an images folder and I've included the Python logo that I use for these videos, just as a test image. And that's where I'm going to keep my static files. Now, this isn't the, f the folder that Django will look in to to find static files at the time when you actually go to download them through the web page what django needs to do is it needs to register these files into a set of um, files that the url system can then link to and the reason why that it's not straightforward in that you can just link to it straight through a url without having to do any programming or taking any records or registering files is because Django has a system where it doesn't necessarily have to serve files from your web server. If you've got something like a content delivery network, something like Amazon Web Services or something like that, you can also include that. And you can do that without necessarily having to rewire your whole website. So to, to make it more flexible, Django says that yeah, when you're serving static files, it needs to register them if it's going to be on your web server and if you want to change the back end system to point somewhere else later it's not going to hit you hard at that point in time so all of this gets done in development time and later on if you need to change configurations that's when it becomes easier so this might seem a little bit more complex than it seems it should be but it does benefit you in the long run so we're storing our files in this static folder how do we tell Django about this fo the folder? Well, we go into our settings.py and we have three um, different options. We have the static root, which is where the root folder for all static information will be. And in our case, because we're in development mode, the root is in this Django test folder that we've got, which is our project folder. So everything that we pull in uh, in terms of files will be pulled into this folder here. And that's okay for development. Um, when you, once you actually get onto a deployed server, then you can actually change that setting and have it somewhere uh, out of the way of your code, which would probably be better for you. And then obviously that's um, giving you a level of abstraction or deep coupling from the file system. Hence, you can then start include things like Amazon Web Services to start and serve files because they're not coupled together and not bound together. So that's what that static root setting is for. The static URL setting is basically um, 
what we're going to tack on to the end of a web address. So static on here would be, um, for instance, static CSS, although that's not a valid path at the minute because um, we haven't actually got our web service switched on or our web server rather. So static and then CSS would be a folder within static and then our file name. So this static URL actually refers to the the part on the URL that we need to re, to tell Django about so it can route through from our web server to the file system on the server. Because obviously we've got URLs for things like articles, um, which we set up earlier. We've got URLs for the admin system, which we set up in previous ex uh, examples. In this case, we also have to set up a generic URL that will automatically tell the web server, this is not um, code that I want to ex execute. I want you to go through and find this specific binary file and download it rather than actually run it as a script so that's how we tell Django that whenever we some somebody accesses a URL with that part in it we know it's going to be a download file the next section is static file files dir and this is where we tell uh, Django about our static folder that we've been creating inside of the project now, this doesn't necessarily have to be anywhere inside of the project. It could be just in your hard drive. You could put it in your documents folder if you wanted to put the files there. It's just for the sake of, of um, showing you how it works that I've kept it in there. So this, 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 the path to this place can be anywhere you like, really. Um, I've put it in this path here. And when uh, the static files loader goes through it will look for the files in this folder here and then it will go and create another folder where it accepts the files to be part of the system when Django is running and it's going to create an assets folder now that's going to be for in our case alongside the static folder in here but it's also going to pull in some other stuff the other things that it can pull in are things like uh, J JavaScript or um, CSS files or image files to do with the admin system as well because we haven't yet touched upon um, bringing in these static files for the other systems that are a part of that. But you'll see in a second that it actually doesn't just stop at what we've told it. It'll go and say we have the admin system included into the Django build so we need to pull in the files for that. So we've told it where to get these files for our particular static files. We've told it that this is where our CSS and images will all exist. We now need to get, update our template. So the template needs to stop using that old CSS and needs to start using the new CSS. So what we're going to do is we're going to link to the CSS file and we're going to use this logical tag so remember I said curly braces and uh, percentage for something that actually does something more than just referencing a variable and in this case it uses a tag called static static is not a standard template and tag you have to load it in so um, as you might remember from the last example I showed you that you can use tags for various things and you can actually extend Django to add more tags and in this case that's what's happened because of um, Django version 1.4 onwards instead of using um, a strange kind of static URL kind of tag we now use this custom tag which is um, much more sensible and works a lot more in terms of the the idea of template and language so we're using static to say this is a static file pull it into here which is where our assets folder is 
CSS default. So you remember we said once uh, Django has pulled through the system and established that we have static files to, to save, it'll put them in the assets folder. So we're going to say it's in the assets folder under the CSS folder and the name of the files default CSS. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to just introduce this static tag. I'll just type that right. <coughs> Excuse me. So we say load the static tag so that we can begin using it in our templating language. And next I'm going to include an image. Lower down in the page I'm going to include that Python logo that we loaded in. And again I'm going to use the static tag to say in the assets folder under images there's a Python logo that I want to use and it's the source for this image tag in the HTML. So having done that we should now be able to call uh, a new function that works off the manage.py um, script and it's called collect static. Now what that does is it looks at the settings in this in the settings.py file and it says what uh, what places on the file system have we said we should go and look. So it looks at this path that we've defined and it also goes and has a look through um, the admin systems um, paths and establishes a list of files that need to be pulled in and then it'll pull them into this Django test folder, our project folder. Now what we should see is we should see an assets folder created and also an admin folder. So the admin folder is for the actual admin system and should contain all sorts of stuff like JavaScript and, and CSS. And our assets folder should more or less contain the same as what our static folder contains. And those two folders that it will create will then be registered as folders where you can keep static assets like images, CSS, JavaScript, or even PDFs, or even you know downloadable software if you want to do that sort of thing. So going back to our, con our console, we need to run python manage.py collect static just to build up that list of files and have them registered with the static file system so that they can be served through our web server. Now it's saying how you've requested to collect static files at the destination location as specified in your settings. This will overwrite your files. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, we are. And there you go. There's a massive big list. Um, some of these are admin files. So JavaScript coming in from the admin files right at the top. If I can see it. Yep, here we are. There's our default CSS a Python logo that's been pulled in. Now, now that we've done that, we can start the web server. And hopefully, we won't have any errors. So I'm going to go to the web service, or the web page, rather. And here you go. That's loaded in our CSS. And as you can see, it's applied to every page because it's part of our base HTML that we did. And it's also included in our image. So now that we've got that open, let's do a little tweak because I think that this image is not as far too big. So I'm just going to say width equals 200. I know this is not the right way to do it. You should be doing it with CSS if you're going to do sizing with images and that sort of thing. But for the sake of quickness, there you go. <coughs> so what actually happens? Well, if you've got something like Firebug in Firefox or in Google Chrome, you'll be able to in inspect the element and look at the, the actual HTML underneath. What it's actually done 
is it's taken our static URL that we set up in the settings pie and I pe uh, prepended it to the folder name so that our tags done that it's also done that for our CSS here and that's literally all that static tag does in the HTML but if this was on a different web server for instance something that you'd already had hosted somewhere on the World Wide Web and instead of your local machine your settings in your, PY, your settings.py file would be slightly different and also your static URL would be different and perhaps it might have your website address on there for instance the the default um, comments come along with an example of a website address that would it would be and as you can see the static part is just tacked onto the end of the URL and that would change when you get it deployed onto the web server but for, for the time being we are using a relative URL which just tacks onto the end up there um, let's just see if I can open image in a new tab there we go so this is the full path here that we're just tacking on to the end of our web server and that's literally how the static file system works um, there are more complicated ways of doing things and they're possibly outside the scope of this tutorial but I hope that that's gotten you enough to to the point where you can actually link in CSS and JavaScript and some images onto your websites. If you enjoyed this tutorial or it helped you out in any way then uh, please like, click the like button. Um, if you'd like to know more about Django or any of the other tutorials that I'm publishing on this this YouTube, ch ch YouTube channel then uh, please click subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.